Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it to the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate an iconic weapon from history. The War Galak. Originating in the Philippines during the 16th century, the War Galak featured a straight double-edged blade with no tip. Due to the Spanish occupation at the time, Filipinos were outlawed from having pointed swords, and the blade was often used for vegetation and chopping wood. However, by the Philippine Revolution in 1896, Filipinos adapted to the tipless weapon, and it became a weapon of war. It was so effective in battle, it inspired later variations of the weapon, such as the British military's Army Galak in the early 1950s. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. My name is Matt Wagner. I run an auto body restoration shop, and I work with metal every day. I started watching Forge and Fire, and then one day I was like, you know what? I think I can do that. I'm ready to crank this baby up. I'm anxious because I have never made a sword this long. I want to win this competition because I've always thought I was meant to do something better. Today is a make or break it point. My main concern is quenching the blade because it could create massive warping. This is the big moment. <laughs> That's freaking straight. So now that I'm quenched, I'd like to take a couple whacks at a piece of wood just to see what's going to happen. I've shattered my blade into three pieces. This is an epic failure. I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to start over. I might not finish this thing. My plan is to use a piece of leaf spring and get a complete sword forged out in one day. I'm working on a deadly timeline. I am just busting my I got to get my quench done by the end of day four because I don't know if I have a good blade yet. I may have to build another one tomorrow. You never know. It's cool pretty quick. I'm running out of time. If this blade doesn't harden with this quench, I'm really screwed. I got my fingers crossed. We've got a hard blade. I am super happy. Looks like I'm going to have something for the big show. <laughs> My name's Brian Schmidt. I believe my great-grandfather was a blacksmith. So when I saw Forged and Fire, I wanted to try and make my own blades and just create memories with my family. I think I have a pretty good chance of winning. The basic shape of my blade is in there now. This is going to be the orgolic. The blade's looking really nice. We've got the handle set up for a lot of work today. The handle's made out of maple. It's also the part of the knife where I'm customizing it for myself a little bit. Yeah, not so bad. I think they turned out pretty nice. I sharpened my blade three times. The thing's razor sharp. All right. Feels good. Now, I want to go test the blade. And my son is joining me. Ready? All right, here we go. Ooh, awesome. That thing slices right through. It feels good in my hand, so I think it's going to do well. All right. Very deadly. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver hacks and slashes on this big carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. Depending on where you hit that blade, you know, it can always snap apart. Bladesmiths, unfortunately, I'm still recovering from an injury. So, Anthony, one of my senior instructors of Markai Kali, will be the butcher to your pork chop. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade. First up, your edge is razor sharp. It lacerated easily through bones, through the spine. The one issue here is that you have a very blocky handle. Aside from that, it will kill. Good job. Thanks. Matt, ready to chop? I've been ready. Let's do this. Okay, Matt, its balance and weight is very forward for a chopper, but your edge is sharp enough to lacerate into the carcass. 
It did chop the spine. It did chop bone. This will kill. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is a strength test. To test the strength and durability of your edge, I'm going to chop into these huge logs 10 times. Remember, this test is all about what happens to your weapons and not what happens to the logs. Brian, you're up first. Are you ready? I think so, yeah. All right. Your edge held up perfectly. There's no bending, no warping, just still razor sharp all the way down. Man, it was fun to swing. Well done. Thank you. Matt, you're up. You ready? Give it a try. All right. Well, Matt, there's so much forward weight that it actually bent that way. On the plus side, your edge held beautifully. I mean, there's no problems with that edge at all. It's still very sharp, but this S bend in it, it's significant. Bladesmiths, you both brought in some pretty extraordinary historic weapons, but in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Brian, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Matt, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Matt, your blade is impressive. We saw that it could kill. But unfortunately, in the strength test, it took a significant bend. And it's for that reason we have to let you go. I understand. Matt, please surrender your galak. Even with losing at the end of the day, I don't feel like I really lost because I went way further than I ever expected. I don't know enough about it yet that I can make that perfect blade. So, you know, I'll keep learning. Brian, you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Please present your weapon to the judges. It feels great to be Forged and Fire champ. I can't believe I won. It's awesome. I would say if somebody wants to start learning how to make a knife, start out watching Forge and Fire. Just started episode one. Binge watch.